deaths. We know that more than 200 people are still being held hostage and many, many others are still missing after that October 7th terrorist attack by Hamas on Israel. Arez and Sahar Calderon are among the missing right now and their mother Hadas Calderon joins us live to talk more about her children. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me here. Welcome. Can you start off by telling me about your children? My children, normal children, nice children, sweet children. Erez is 12 years old. He's a very funny child. He has a great humor. He loves animals. He loves to ride a horse. He loves to ride a, a mountain bike. He loves to play football and ping pong. And he loves, you know, computer. And he's very, very sensitive boy. He, he, he had also a lot of fearness because of the situation we are in uh, 20 years, we have, you know, we got bombs in Gaza. So he really need me, you know? Saha, she's beautiful and very amazing, sweet girl. She's 16 years old. She love to dance and to draw. She love art. She love to, you know, new clothes and uh, makeup and and she always helps. She have a huge good heart. She always helps everybody around her. And their father, their father offer great father who gave them all he can, you know, He's a carpenter, he makes, he has special good hands. He's an artist, like he make anything from wood. And he always been, uh, he's not been, he's still, he always a great father. He gives them, you know, take them to travel and show them the nature and animals and uh, take them to, to get fish in the sea and uh, uh, he, learn, he, he teach them a lot of value to be human, you know? I hope they're all together and they keep each other, and make safe each other. I can talk for hours about them, but probably you want to ask me the next question? I mean, if you have more to say about them, we definitely want to hear it. Uh, but what I was going to say is, how did you find out what happened and what is your understanding of what happened to your children? But again, feel free to talk more about them if you'd like to, to share more of their story. I mean, we are, you know, we are a normal family. We love to help people. We love, we, we fight always for peace. We celebrating and laughing and love to dance in the house and put music and and you know and and eat all together on friday's night and we really warm warm and happy family and and this disaster it's just uh, it, 7 of october it's the last time i heard from them they sent me the last message was that they you know that I'm from Kibbutz, Kibbutz near Oz, yeah, just near by Gaza, and the, the terrorists come six o'clock, six thirty in the morning. We got a lot, a lot of bombs, very massive bombs. We've been attacked with hundred of uh, terrorist group, a big group, army of terrorists. It's not like uh, just one or two. It's like army, a big army of terrorists who came, and we had the worst massacre ever, I think, ever been in, in the world. Uh, it's have ever been the same, anything like that. They, we had a big, big pogrom tragedy, and they, they came and they just went house by house, and they 
massacred and murdered and butchered and mustered and and then burned the houses. I, I can tell you very, very terrified and cruel stories. I don't know if you want to hear, you probably heard, but really, like, they killed full families with babies and with children and dogs and and burn, the, burn people alive, you know? And they shoot ordinary people, ordinary weak people, sick people who was in the bed. We, we all been with pyjama in our bed and they pick us from there and they, they shoot on the bed, old people and children. Sometimes they left the children to see how they murder their parents and left them or took, took them like uh, as, as, as hostage. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's, you can't even imagine. Even they, they, they took a baby from a, they killed a, um, a pregnant woman. They cut her stomach, you know, and took the baby out. And 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 stolen, took all TV and and and, and uh, whatever they could take from the houses, and then burned them. They took the gas out, you know, the gas, and they burned the houses. It's wow, wow! It's unbelievable. And we we've been eight hours all alone. Nobody helps us. Nobody came to save us eight hours till three o'clock afternoon we've been alone no soldiers not our army no helicopter nothing just i was all alone with, because we live in separate houses for eight hours in the dark no water no no telephone no information just me and god and i just prayed and i i i, I tried to survive because i realized that probably we, we won't survive. And just after, you know, I just, we, we didn't have any way to lock the, the safe room from inside. So we had, we had to hold it eight hours because they've been behind the door. You know, they're trying, they, I could hear the Arab talking, I could hear them breaking all my house. How they go to the window and, you know, they, a lot of noise, big noise, a shooting noise. It was a mess, a massacre. It's, wow, you can't even imagine. You can't understand. And and then they burn those houses, the most of them. And the last message I got from my from the father of my children that they, they the terrorist is inside the room, and they run away from the window and hiding in the bush behind the house. And that's it. And my, my son, he sent me a message. I love you, mom. Be quiet. Be quiet. Don't move. I love you. It was the last message from him. And I, I sent the whole family message. I love you all. I hope we will survive. I, you know. And then eight hours, I don't know nothing, no information. And after a while, when our army came, we, I realized they'd been kidnapped with more 80 citizens, babies, children, elderly, men, women, young people, citizens, you know, innocent people that haven't done, how can I say it's, Catastrophic, what can I say? Catastrophic, you know? And now there are still 210 hostages up there. And five members of my family disappeared and kidnapped, five. Two days ago, I got the message, two of them, my mom, my dear, sweet, love mom, and my niece, Noya, which was 13 years old, with special needs, autism, they both been kidnapped and then murdered, been murdered, cruelly way. You know, they all, they took them with pyjama from their bed, from the house, 
and took them, put them on the car, on tractors, and just go. Nobody disturbed them, nobody stopped them. They just walked like it was their own village. They took them back to Gaza, and they're still there. But two of them, of my family, are not with us anymore. I don't have even the time to grave because I have to fight for my children who are still alive. I don't have the time to stop, even to feel my pain. I don't have the time to grave about, about them. I didn't have the time to go to the funeral. I didn't have the time to, to sit for seven weeks, seven days, like it's in our in the religion. religion. We have to sit for seven days. I don't have this time. I don't have this opportunity to, to do that. I don't have the time to, to process and grieve about what's happened to us, about this awful day, this dark day. My All my friends that have been dead and murdered, friends from childhood, parents of my friends. I know everybody, we are like a big family, you know, kibbutz, it's like small village, peacefully place, with, we all friends, we all know each other. I know a lot that been murdered. I don't have time to process this and to grieve for them. I don't have time to process to grieve for my beautiful house that is gone. We don't have any home to go back. We are like re refugees in our country now. We all in a big hotel and we don't have any place to go back. We are refugees. And I don't have the time to to even to stop and, 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 and to realize what's happened here. I just know it's a nightmare, it's a hell. It's, and it's 15 days after, you know? We are 15 days after and they're still there. And I'm asking the whole world, the whole government, wake up, where are you? This is a real uh, humanity cruel, crime against the humanity, okay? And it's not just my story, it's not just my business, it's the old world story. And they're still there, it's, it have to be the main subject, the goal subject. They must release them, they must release, they must send the children home. They can't hold them. It's not possible to, to, you know, children are victim of this war. They are victim. They not. It's not their fault. They are so innocent and helpless. How come you make war on the expense of children? This world, the whole world, have to scream. Send them home. Release them immediately, because. Every moment is critic. Every moment you saw what's happened to my mom and my niece, it can happen to all of them. We don't have time. It's two weeks now. So I think and I believe the whole world, France government and, and United States government and, and Qatar and all of them trying to do their best. It has to be the main goal. You understand? They must send them home immediately. Children, elderly, other hostage, men, women, babies. We never, we don't know any information how conditions they are. If they still, you know, how they keep them. They, they, they are in a very, very cruel, merciless hands. But you know, if you if you will ask me, I will send a message to Qatar and Egypt and Hamas. I will send them a message. I'll tell them you have the opportunity to saw to show the world a different face. You know, you have the opportunity now to show the world you're still human. You have the opportunity to show the world that. You know, the, the, the Islam, Allah, he says, go after me. And the Islam says, you must take care of Audrey and children and women and men and never hurt them. You have to be good. That's what the Islam says. 
and, and, and it's not possible that uh, children will be the victim here. Here, this is my heiress. You know, you see, you love, he loves to ride this horse. Tankerbill, it's her name. He loves, he misses his horse, I'm sure. He loves animals. He has such pity and sensitive heart. And this is so, so beautiful and sweet. Huge heart. Always helps, always was with her grandma. They play chess and damka and other games. They spend such a long time together. <sighs> this is Erez again. And their father, you have to show their father. I hope they're all together and they keep safe each other. And I'm asking Hamas, save the children. Take care of them like it was your own children, please. Make sure they're safe. Take care of them and send them home. It's not their war. It's not belong to them. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. I, like I said, I can't even begin to imagine what you're going through right now. So I appreciate you joining us and telling us about your son and your daughter and, and your husband there. Is there anything else that you want to add before I let you go? You can't sacrifice babies and children. That's what I'm saying. You can't sacrifice for anything. You can't do that. You can't. What face you show, what, what you show to the world. This cruelness, it's ever happened. This kind of cruelness ever, never happened in, in the world. You know? We never celebrate any death of children of the other side, never. We, we always keep them safe. We, we, we fight against terrorists, not against children and old people, sick people who need medicine. You know, <laughs> it's, I, I don't know. I, I don't have any life anymore. I, I just want my life back. I don't think life is going to be the same ever. Even when it's finished, something very, very bad and wrong happened in our world. The world won't be the same again. Won't be the same. Tomorrow it can happen in, you know, just to you and to anyone. Not just here. It's not just one terrorist here or there. It's, it's, a, it's a very big group. It's an army of terrorists. Very danger. Very, very danger and cruel. What can I say? It's terrifying. It's really terrifying. It's uh... it's a crime against the humanity, and and I think the main goal have uh, must to be, not have must to be the main goal. It's to release them immediately. Make them safe, send them home to their mom. You know, I miss the smell and the smile and to hug them and to take care of them and I can promise them I will never leave them again. I, I will always take care of them and take them to a safe place because what's happened here is like, We've been abandoned, you know, twice. We've been abandoned by our country. First time in the 7th of October where no one, no one came to help us for eight hours. We went to survive. The second time it's now. When they, when they, they don't get any solution and there are solutions. 
you know, give them prison. I'm a, not a political woman. I'm a simple woman, but I know you can give them prisons. We have like 4,000 prisons. Give them. Give them whatever they ask. You can't sacrifice babies and children for I don't know which goal. You can't do that. You understand? The world won't be the same if they are not safe, if they're not coming back. Of course, my families won't be the same, but the world won't be the same. I don't have time even to cry and to feel the pain. Just in, in the night when I put my head on the bed, by sleeping, my friends all the time with me, she told me, I heard you four o'clock in the morning, crying and screaming. And I told her, what? I was sleeping. It was by my sleep. I didn't even know I was crying and sleeping, but you understand? Just when I sleep, I have the time to realize and to process what's happened to us. It's crisis. I don't have the word, you know, I, my English is not the best, so I can't even ex explain you. And I think that the main uh, I don't know I don't know what to say anymore I, I really you, there are so many stories that people old people who've been hiding under beds for hours three four hours without breathing without drinking just hiding to save their life old people who jump from the windows and run away some of them, some of them not with us anymore. Sick people, I know them all because it was my job. I was, uh, I work, I worked with the old, with the old people. I helped them. I know each of them. I know, you know, all the medicine, everything they need. Half of them won't come back. They can't survive without medicines. And also, I have alternative medicine uh, clinic. I always helped people, you know, I gave people from my heart why I deserve that, why we deserve that, why the world deserves that. It's cruelness. I, I, The whole world have to scream to take my voice and to take my words and scream. Save them. Send the children home. You know, the only thing I can do is wear a black sh shirt now. It's the only way I can grave. It's the only way I can <laughs> be a part of that. Because I don't have time for that. I have to fight and I'm fighting, and I will go to the moon and back, till I bring them back home. Any mom will do the same. You know, I'm talking to the mom heart, any mom heart of the, in Gaza, and in Qatar, and Egypt, or, or the Muslim moms. You brought birth, you, you brought from your body children, to this world, you know was it how how what is a child? You have to take care for children, to make them be safe. You have to make them believe in this world. What can I tell them? What 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 can I tell them now about this this world? What good words I can say about this world now? Tell me. Can you tell me? What are you going to tell your children? I can tell you, I can just tell, be, take care of your children, you know? Make them close to you, make them safe, because you never know. Chuck, in one day it's finished. Say, so burn them, you know? Burn them in the house, in the bed shoot them in front of their eyes, shoot their parents, 
they did this like this. How come? I think we have to find a new wo word because there is no word to ex express this situation. Not in Hebrew, not in English, nor in any language. We have to find a new word for, for, for what's happened here. It's crisis, it's massacre, it's a pogrom, it's a shoah. Hadas, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and tell us about your children and you know their father. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you and we do appreciate your time. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. And I think you're doing a good job. I appreciate, and appreciate that. any help. I appreciate and I'll never forget any help. I'll never forget. Thank, thank you again. Thank you very much. Are with you. Thank you very much.